I cannot enter. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, yes. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Doctor Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Good evening, Good evening, Mr. Goswell. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Do you need any help? Thank you, Dr. Reed, but you've done enough already. The rest is up to me now. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswell? So painful, I'd rather not talk to the doctor. I'll let you get some rest. Good evening, doctor. How is my son doing? Goodbye, Mrs. Goswell. Good evening, Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good, Good evening, Dr. Dr. Reed. Any news Any about news my operation? operation? Are you Are satisfied you with your treatment here? Well, well it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. injured. Forgive, Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases, cases of the flu. I won't, I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid, I'm afraid we are. Are you sure I'm you don't sure want to operate yourself, Dr. Dr. Reed? I have a feeling you're very capable. And your, and your colleagues, colleagues seem to think so, too. In other, In other circumstances, circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later.
Good evening, Good evening, Milton. Good evening Doctor. Doctor. Still, Still trying to trying save, to save lives. lives. I have some I have good some news, news, Milton. What? what? The, epidemic's the epidemic's over? over. I, retrieved I retrieved your wallet. wallet. With all the money and a certain picture. Well, well yeah, yeah. Pippa Hawkins, Hawkins is my girl. So what? So what? Is it the is difference, difference of skin, skin colour that bothers you? Not at all, Milton. Good. Good. Please, Please, take this money anyway. To remind you to keep your mouth shut. Not everybody's as broad-minded as you, Dr. Reed. Admit it. Nurse Hawkins is more than your lover. She's also your partner in crime. Of course she is. How else could I tell which bit is free? I need to know that. Have you no shame? Don't you see the city is crumbling down? Today people are ready to pay to get a hospital bed. Tomorrow we may be fighting for food. Tell me why you're extorting money from some of the patients here. If a patient wants a bed, he'll have to pay me a little fee. That's all. Where did you get the idea that such an immoral scam? Funny you should ask. The first time it was from a patient who bribed me to get a bed. So only then I realized I could make a fortune. Okay, stuck in there. What's going on between you and Nurse Hawkins? Pippa's tired. Tired of all this shit. Tired of all those corpses piling up. She's as depressed as I am. During the war, I witnessed a few couples just like you come together in difficult circumstances. It can be very damaging. Maybe you're right. But we support each other. And that's all that matters. You do realize you could both get fired. Hospital staff are not meant to have intimate relationships with one another. Come on, Dr. Reed. You know how many rules are broken in this hospital every day just to keep it running? There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. I'd like, I'd like to, see to see your girls. girls. Why is Joyce Dr. Reed? Reed? A reliable oh, gun is what everybody needs these days. days. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howard? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. 
This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead, unalive, immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. It may seem strange, but your words have brought me some comfort here. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Do you need something, Jonathan? I have just a few questions. Then ask away. I'm at your service, Doctor. You mentioned something about a secret society. A brotherhood, if I recall. Could you elaborate? Certainly. I've been a member of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole for several years. We are pledged to monitor and report vampire activity in England as impartial scientific observers. Yet you don't fear me. And still, you know the monster that lurks beneath the civilized surface. The Brotherhood has studied your kind for centuries. We believe you are as supernatural as a lion is to a gazelle. That explains your nightly wanderings about the docks and the questions you ask. I feel it wasn't mere coincidence that led us to that part of town. There was something as yet unseen that set those chain of events in motion. The man we pursued and slew in the canning factory William Bishop, I believe. Was he a vampire? He was a skull, technically speaking. The debate rages as to their classification. Some think them a subspecies of vampire, others something else. Just for clarity, what differences are there between myself and a, a skull? A skull is easier to eliminate, Jonathan, even if they remain formidable foes for the unprepared. <laughs> Vampires... Now, vampires exist beyond the mortal realm. Where do... How do skulls come into existence? The name means slave. The etymology may indicate that they are a lesser species of vampire. From what I know, vampires tend to despise them. Since you seem quite the expert on vampires, what could you tell me about my condition and how it came about? As men of science, our first step is always to start with what we know. Forget the myths, the hackneyed scrawlings and the penny dreadfuls. They do not scratch the surface of the truth you now find yourself in. The sun. The morning following my... transformation. Its rays burn me. 
There was pain, smoke, uh, and my skin blackened. You will find there is very little that can kill a vampire, my friend. You have been offered relative immortality. The sun will most certainly hurt you, leaving you weakened and damaged, but it will not destroy you. Must I take a life to live? You are a vampire. You feed, and blood is the sole sustenance that can sustain your immortal frame. And only a living creature contains the nourishment you require. We'll see each other again soon, Edgar. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Have you heard about any blackmail going on in this hospital? Blackmail? Nonsense. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later.
will not let you down. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Have you heard rumors about blackmail in this hospital? No. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Have you heard rumors of blackmail going on in this hospital? Dr. Reed, are you trying to take advantage of me? Of course not, Mrs. Goswick. I'm just curious. Well, go be curious somewhere else, please. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. You always knew the words. I can't be sure we're making... Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Have you heard any talk of blackmail going on in the hospital? If you're running some official inquiry, you had better question the patients. They know more than the staff, especially old Miss Jones. Tell me, Thoreau, what's the real cause of your dislike for Dr. Aykroyd? He refuses to admit that your blood transfusion technique is the only way to save Mr. Fiddick. I'm convinced we must use it. What Dr. Aykroyd really said is that you lack the skill to perform this operation efficiently. Is there anything you have to say about this? It's a false conceit. Dr. Aykroyd secretly envies your reputation. His jealousy blinds him. I'm not the real target here. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett's, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now, eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? I have no time for such triviality, my dear colleague. We're here to save lives. Corn, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. 
How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <coughs> Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <coughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but a rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you? A kindred spirit. Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? You are aware that I too know the thirst for the Scarlet Nectar. 
In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> how brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's vein. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. Miss Jones, greetings. How do we feel? Again? Waking a poor old woman in her sleep? There isn't a poor life needs saving somewhere? Now, I need to ask you a few simple questions. Well, if you really must. If you could just tell me why you were admitted. It's terrible, Doctor. What with a pain in my chest, coughing up blood, and I get awfully tired. Wouldn't be so bad if I hadn't lost my house and all. I see. No one comes to visit, you know. Not even my own flesh and blood. Have you noticed any suspicious comings or goings? It would be a great deal easier to make a list of things unsuspicious in this house of charlatans. Come now, Miss Jones. Surely it's not that bad. <laughs> Have you no eyes? This hospital accepts all manner of souls, regardless of origin. The proper sick cannot heal. We're kept sickened by the refugees. Everyone here is very capable. I have not seen any instances of unprofessionalism. Thieves and murderers the lot. People have gone missing here, you know. Poof, without a trace. I'll come and visit you shortly. Good night, Miss Jones.
The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. Fear and disgust on every street corner. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Have you heard of any blackmailing going on within these walls? I have no time for mortal games. My secrets are beyond their comprehension, Dr. Reed. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. I wonder what your last thoughts would be, sir. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pippa. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick and poor? No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first, even though Milton would say it was his, to protect me. Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead, or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? You put a price on hope. This goes against everything you swore to uphold as a nurse. Report me then, Dr. Reed. Report the little nurse and keep on lying about the surgical errors, the wrong dosages and diagnostics that we all covered for the sake of our colleagues. What steps are you prepared to take to feel more useful? I don't know yet. My sister believes that the real fight is in the streets nowadays. Maybe she's right. Maybe this is what I must do. If you feel that saving lives is not useful enough, perhaps it means that you've lost faith. On the contrary, my faith has never been stronger. Maybe we are all just too proud to face up to the fact that science cannot compete with God. And what about Milton Hooks? Does he share your point of view? For Milton, any change means more comfort and more peace. I disagree. Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton Hooks. Yes. Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins, but are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey, I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke, but we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps that old crone alive. She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. But the suffering continues. It's 
safer here than anywhere else. Is our little mystery closer to being solved, Dr. Reed? I think of nothing else, my lady. My situation is delicate, and it occupies all my thoughts. The blackmail must stop. I need assurance. It's locked.
Please, sir. I need help bad. What's going on? I'm Blight, sir. Newton Blight. I've lost my mate. Can't find him anywhere. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. Please calm down and give me more details. Oswald and myself were both infantry, sir. We were en route for the hospital, but... Well, we had a disagreement. And Oswald ran off towards the canal. How long have you been searching for him? I, ca I can't go there. Too many rats by the water. Fucking rats. Can't stand them since the war, sir. Can't stand them at all. Don't be ashamed, Mr. Blight. Many soldiers who survived the trenches suffer from musophobia. I'll see what I can do for your friend. Where was your friend the last time you saw him? He went down by the canal. He didn't want to go to the hospital. I think he went to the sewers on purpose. So I couldn't go after him. This is a dangerous part of town. What are you doing here? We were looking for the Pembroke Hospital. He... We both need help. Tr treatment, I mean. To get some sleep. Just need to feel better, sir. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm Oswald's best friend. We served in the same regiment, sir. Taking care of each other since we came back from the front. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Oswald Thatcher. We survived the war together. Oswald is... 
nervous and quite fragile since we came back from the war. Do you need medical attention, sir? No thanks, sir. Unless you're able to get rid of every rat in London. I have all the information I need for now. If I find anything out about your friend, I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, Dr. Reed. I cannot enter. People who don't sleep at night always seem more alive to me. More interesting, one way or another. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in the hospital? Blackmail? That's not my style. Too risky. The black market, though. Now that's where the money is. Do you ever think about that? Poor fellow, I saw you push in the water. The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. It still fucking hurts. Boss, it cut me good. That man was determined to murder you. You almost died. What a surprise. The first time I met him, he nearly shit himself. Fucking coward. Oh, I guess revenge gives you balls. What did he want? Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor arsehole thought it would be easy to return the favor. Only the strongest survive, then? Survival at all costs. Is that all you think about? I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. How is your hospitalization going, Mr. Cox? This is a shitty place with shitty staff. But as long as I'm treated all right, I'll be fine. What's wrong with the Pembroke staff? That bastard you sent to bring me here, Milton. I thought he was going to break all my bones before I reached my bed. I see. Any other smart comments? The nurses aren't too ugly. Especially that foxy one, Nurse Crane. Pretty brunette, tough attitude, all like that. What's wrong with the hospital? Come on, Dr. Reed. The place is a dump. Smelly, sad, and dirty. But you're alive thanks to the efforts and dedication of the staff here, aren't you? What are you expecting, a medal? I thought that saving lives was just part of the job. Must be an unsatisfactory profession at this time, I'm sure. How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? I know this city like the back of my hand, Doc. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. The police may be slow, but they will find you eventually. Well, how come you didn't turn me in then? Nah, Doc. 
I figure you have something to hide. You can't ask the coppers for help. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. I'd like to see your wise choice. You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I hope to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then, when you go back to Whitechapel, you may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. <laughs> 